Mm. All right. So today, I want to talk about reactive abuse. I've been wanting to talk about this for a little while. Um, reactive abuse, what is it? Reactive abuse is an in the moment reaction to mistreatment from another person. When a victim reacts, the abuser uses this reaction to impart further abuse in the form of blame shifting. So in thinking about the Darvo where the narcissist denies and then accuses you and reverses the victim and therefore offends. Um, reactive abuse is when somebody purposely tries to get a rise out of you in an effort to promote you to hostility. Um, it's hard it's hard to imagine, you know, we talk about the golden rule and do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but this does not, um, it's, it's not, um, it's, it's a no-go, it's a lose-lose when you're dealing with an antagonistic personality style or a narcissistic abusive personality style. So, if you're an empath, uh, you love your neighbor as yourself. You do unto them as you would have them do unto you. Well, so this is coming from a place of love. Um, and good intentions um, when you want to do a good turn uh, for somebody else. Um, so a friend of mine locked her keys in her car and I just went over there for moral support. Um, I, I couldn't help, but she was only seven minutes away. So I just went over there just as some presents, just to see if I might be able to help. But, um, my powers only go so far when it comes to narc slaying. Um, I can't, there's, it's not effective on uh, Ford Rangers. Um, so anyway, if you can imagine um, a different scenario where, you know, the empathic person might feel um, compassion towards the person who locked their keys in their car because they would think, you know, and if I was in the same situation, I would want somebody to come to my rescue or somebody to come be with me and help me try to resolve this issue. Well, the narcissist or the antagonistic personality style, uh, they relish in the fact that you locked your keys in your car because they like to look at you as being stupid and inferior to them. So this gives them that false sense of worth that they surround themselves with and they feel superior to you. And so they drive over there uh, to be with you, uh, to watch your helplessness and feed off of your insecurities. And I know that's hard to imagine that there are people like that, but believe me, there are tons of narcissistic personality styles in our lives and in this society that do just that. So with the way that the uh, narcissistic personality style looks at it is they believe empathy sells. They have variable to low empathy. Okay, so they cannot fathom the fact that there are people out there who actually care about fellow human beings and can actually empathize and sympathize with other people's difficulties and trials because they cannot. So for instance, when a narcissist does something 
that uh, appears to be empathetic or sympathetic towards another human being, in their mind, in their psyche, they believe that this person owes them 10 times more than what they just gave out. They believe that it is a license to abuse. Since they were there for you in a particular scenario, you have to be there 10 times more for them. That's how grandiose and entitled that they feel. So, you know, the Bible when says that when pray for your enemies, and when you do this, it reaps um, coals of fire on their hair, head, that it makes them feel guilty. Okay, well, the narcissistic personality style has no guilt. They have zero guilt. So you can pray for that enemy, but there's no guilt that they're gonna feel. Okay, if you're in a relationship with uh, somebody who has done something wrong to you, and like the Bible says, if you have ought against your brother, go to him and, and make it right and pray for him. Well, it, that is not gonna work on the devil. So imagine praying for Satan, praying for the devil himself. Uh, you, do you think that you're gonna make Satan feel guilty? Do you think you're gonna make Satan reap coals of fire on his conscience and feel guilty? No, it's not gonna happen. Mm. So we all, uh, empaths, human beings, uh, real empathic people that have a deep sense of shame and guilt, neurotic folks. Um, from time to time, I suffer myself from compulsive disclosure. So uh, I don't have much of a filter, so I will just um, blurt things out <laughs> that come into my mind. I used to do comedy and that came in handy, but in the real world, uh, it becomes a downfall and it offends people. And I'm completely aware of this. Um, and sometimes I do things like, for instance, I, uh, I hugged a woman uh, who has cancer the other day and I gave her a hug. And as I was hugging her, I told her that I watched a friend of mine die from cancer. And she immediately said, that's not what I wanted to hear, you know. And uh, I felt bad. I felt uh, guilt. I felt shame that I opened my mouth during that time. But um, what I wanted to convey was that my friend died in 04 and he was only 34 years old. And uh, to, to watch somebody perish from a disease like cancer is uh, very traumatizing and there's a lot of grief um, and a lot of mourning, a lot of lamenting that comes along with it. And probably that was a very inappropriate time for me to say such a thing, uh, but I did not mean any harm to that person. I was just trying to talk about real feelings and sometimes it's, it's inappropriate to talk about true feelings and some people aren't ready to hear true feelings. Um, but if you can imagine a scenario where somebody would absolutely want to say something like that to another human being, uh, in an effort to uh, make them uh, feel uh, sick to their stomach physically, uh, to make somebody feel grief, uh, to play upon their insecurities and their fears and to agitate that, that is exactly what reactive abuse is. So when you're in a relationship with a narcissistic personality style, they will deliberately and strategically 
find areas where you have experienced trauma, especially in your childhood. Um, like one of my last um, ex-wives, um, she had a relationship with my second ex-wife. And I always thought this was strange, but now that I've come out of the abusive uh, narcissistic cycle, I realized that that was a strategic move on her account to gather as much intel uh, on me for the purpose of later dominating me and to feel superior over me and to use past wounds and past trauma uh, to uh, further um, uh, psychologically manipulate me and control me. Um, so reactive abuse is a real um, type of abuse that probably as an empath uh, that you would never even think about, uh, you know, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time deliberately to hurt somebody. Um, but these narcissistic personality styles and antagonistic personality styles, they absolutely will use um, your past trauma, your past childhood trauma, your past relationship trauma, um, things that have happened uh, during your relationship with them. Uh, they love to bring up your past, um, but uh, for the antagonistic personality style, uh, you cannot bring up uh, any of their past wrongs. Uh, they will uh, shame you and make you feel guilty uh, for bringing up the past. The past is over. And if you are an empath and a narcissistic abusive cycle and you're in a relationship with a narcissist and still being controlled by a narcissist, um, the fact that you are still in the relationship in their mind means that you have forgiven them and you have moved uh, past their past mistakes. And in their mind, they, you have forgiven them because you're still in a relationship with them. And in their mind, if you've forgiven them, then you are weak because the narcissistic personality style will hold everything that you say against you. Just like uh, a cop reading your Miranda rights, you have the right to remain silent and anything you say will and can be used against you. The narcissist views everything that you have ever done in your life with your family, your friends, your significant others as leverage against you. And in their mind, they have the right uh, to hold anything that you've said and done personally against you. And for reactive abuse purposes, they love to bring those type of things out in an effort to provoke you to hostility and rage and verbal abuse. And then that way they can use the Darvo method and deny your accusations and accuse you of the same thing and reverse the victim and therefore offend you. And in their mind, they um, oscillate uh, between uh, being the victim and the rescuer and the persecutor. Uh, I believe that's the Cartman diagram. And they don't know how to live any other authentic ways, except they, they live uh, in a world, in a fantasy world where they are um, envious of others and they believe that other people envy them. So they're, fantasy world knows no bounds and uh, they believe that everybody is just a wolf in sheep's clothing as they are. So be careful of people that intimately know you 
and try to strike chords with you in an effort to provoke some hostility on your part. Um, and basically what I like to do is, uh, you know, if it doesn't feel good, you need to walk away from that person physically, spiritually, mentally. Uh, once is a fluke, twice is a coincidence, and three times is a pattern. Uh, you stick around people that make you feel good about yourself. Stick around people that value you without expecting anything in return. And if they do expect things in return from you and it's lopsided, you probably can very well chalk it up as they are um, trying to inflict a form of reactive abuse upon you uh, to discard you. So I hope this video helps. It's, it was great making the video and I hope to see you soon. Uh, have a good day, night, afternoon, wherever you are.